gracious Lord, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for his gift to us, his precious blood upon the cross of Calvary, so freely given to people. Oh, Lord, all we have to do is receive and, and, and accept him, and it's, we're covered by the blood, washed by the blood. And so, Heavenly Father, as we worship here this morning, may your name be uplifted and glorified, and you would anoint our preacher, and you would just lead him in the message that he is supposed to preach. And Lord Jesus Christ, we will give you all the glory and all the praise. Amen. How lovely on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news. Good news, announcing peace, proclaiming news of happiness. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Yes, our God reigns. Hallelujah. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. He had no stately form. He had no majesty that we should be drawn to him. He was despised. And we took no account of him, yet now he reigns with the most high. Oh, our God reigns, our God reigns, our God reigns, our God reigns. Our God reigns. Out from the tomb, Woo! he came yes, with grace Lord. and majesty. He is alive, He is alive, God loves us so, but see here His hands, His feet, His side, yes we know, yes we know, He is alive, well our God reigns, yeah, glory. Yes, our God reigns, our God reigns. Our God reigns, give him praise. Oh, our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Well, our God reigns. Oh, our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. classic book written by John Stott he said this quote if we're looking for a definition of love we should not look in a dictionary but to Calvary the ultimate expression of both God's glory today and God's love is found in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ Really, I have been and I extracted a study out of the study of Mark over the past month or so called The Journey to the Cross. And I'm continuing on that. And today we're dealing with the grave. And we'll be dealing with then beyond the grave and what happened in the resurrection in the days ahead. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah that on the cross, Jesus atoned for our sins. On the cross, Jesus paid for our failures. On the cross, he bled for our transgressions. And on the cross, he died for our iniquities. All that sums up with this, that Jesus died for the sins of all mankind. He bore our sins. He took our sorrows. The man of sorrows would walk sorrow's path. That today we could be in this church and by the redemptive power, the atoning blood of Christ, we can be delivered and know that we've been born again by the Spirit of God. I am not ashamed that I am a Christian, washed in the blood, born again, and on my way to heaven. Amen. Jesus died on the cross to make you and I fully alive. Now listen, we mope through life with all the struggles and challenges and problems. We go through life and face the issues and all the other things that we encounter. But I'm here to tell you that on the cross, thank God you can be made fully alive. And we need to start living lives that represent and, ex and show that we are alive in Him. Thank God I'm alive. And you are too if you're in Christ today. There are times that God wants to do something remarkable in our lives. And however, the remarkable will always, always involve risk. You may think, well, you're saying then it's risky to be a Christian? Yeah. Jesus took the risk. The Apostle Paul took the risk in suffering to, for Christ and by saying, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And let me tell you, when you look at the burial of Jesus, you come across a person who took a risk. Those who were around the cross took a risk. And especially one particular man that we don't hear a lot about except maybe around the Easter season, Joseph of Arimathea and how that he took the risk. Listen, God will willingly expose himself. And what happened here, he exposed himself to this man that he would expose himself to danger, harm, and loss for the sake of God's kingdom. Are you willing to step out and say to the world that you are not ashamed that you are a Christian? Are you willing in these days that we're living in that are perplexing and filled with trouble and trials, are you willing today to be identified with Jesus Christ, the cross, and the resurrected Savior? Joseph Arimathea, he stepped out of the routine and did something remarkable. That's really my desire no, I'm not Joseph of Arimathea. I'm not Paul the Apostle. I'm Carlton, a born-again child of God that refuses to quit regardless of whatever I face and whatever it costs me. I am not ashamed to stand up and preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Could it be today could it be today that God is wanting you to step out of your routine and take a risk for Him? It's going to cost you something to be a Christian. You're not along for a free ride. There's suffering, there's agony, there's pain, there's rejection. There's a lot of things that comes when you stand up for Christ. But I'm going to tell you, my dear friend, it's worth it all. For when you stand before the King, the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to see that that places and times in your life that when the world was going one direction, but you stood up for Christ, that it will be worth it all for what you have done for Him. We're living in a day that people are fearful. And I think it's time we as Christians stop being fearful. And that we get excited about the...
the great things that God can do in you and I today. I'm excited that I'm a child of the King. I'm excited that I can stand in this pulpit and proclaim the message of God, not only to you, but those who are watching today by Facebook and those who will watch my television and to let my light so shine before men that they'll see my good works for God and glorify Him. Amen. You also should step out of the routine. Listen, my dear friend. I receive no glory. All the glory goes to God. Last couple years, when I faced surgery, I did an interview that's coming out in the magazine, Lynchburg Magazine, home here in the near future. And all the glory I gave was to God. Not the glory to what I went through, but that God got glory out of that. There were surgeons and family and friends and church and everybody else thought I was going to die. I found out that there's a God that'll make a way. That whatever you're going through, that God is always there today. I'm glad that God can do what you and I can't do. I'm glad today He will bring you out of the trials and tragedies of life. And lift you up and restore you and bless you and use you. He didn't save you to sit. He saved you to serve. He didn't save you to be quiet. He saved you to listen. The Word of God says, I don't want any rocks to cry out in my place. I'm standing before you today. And I stand on prosthetic legs. I stand with a body that's scarred from surgeries loss of legs then this past Thursday trying to keep my house looking sharp got my leaves cut up taking the hair up and out I did that by God's grace riding on my lawnmower chilling around in the yard with a sleeveless shirt on and praising God hallelujah you say why are you walking around with a sleeveless shirt I want to show you that where I was nothing but flab hallelujah I got some muscle tone and I'm not ashamed to show my abs I'm not ashamed to show my biceps, triceps, and anything else that God has brought back. When I was in the hospital going through surgery and in nursing homes and all that stuff, I'd hold my arm up and all my skin went straight to the floor. Well, I tell you right now, man, God's given me strength. Last Thursday, I was out doing my yard and finishing up, blowing off my concrete driveway. And all of a sudden, I quit, made a turn too quick. To the right, and the next thing I know, I'm sailing through the sky trying to do acrobat acrobatics, gymnastics, and my landed flat on my right side on my driveway. Thank God I was smart enough to keep my head up. So I'm beat up, bruised up, band-aids covered, swollen hands, sprained wrist, black and blue hip. Woo, glory. But let me tell you what. I'm still praising God. And our God is good. And through everything that you go through, listen church, through everything that you face, don't wallow in self-pity, but praise God that God is a God that will bring you through. Put your face and make a way where there is no way and do a work in you that, my friend, you can proclaim the greatness of our God. Amen. God's given you a testimony. Don't use it for self-pity, but use it for God's glory. Amen. Amen. Take the risk. Today, the time of greatest agony, sorrow, pain, and risk, Jesus accomplished what would bring you and I the greatest joy. Jesus has the final word with us. I don't care what the devil has told you. These girls took a risk today to come up here. I'm sure their knees were knocking. Their heart was fluttering. And they maybe had a little bit of fear in them. But I tell you what, I watched them. And I watched that fear melt away as they stood up here with boldness and proclaimed, Come, Jesus, come. Amen. I don't get what the devil has tried to tell you. God has the final word over your life. 
Are you listening to me? You're not defeated. You're not down. You're not out. And let me tell you what. You're not going nowhere. Don't start praying this junk. I was on Facebook. And if you didn't watch the Facebook uh, live feed that I did yesterday, I was downtown Lynchburg doing it. And I turned the camera a little bit to show the, the big old bank building downtown. And when I turned it, my, all of a sudden, it went mute. And so Tiff called me. She said, Dad, did you know that you went mute? I said, I'm sure a lot of people would enjoy that. So I went out, sit down in my driveway, not on the ground, with my blue Toyota behind me, Islander, and uh, I redid it. You need to watch it. Because there's a word of encouragement in, for you in that. I, I just believe it's time Christians take up the cross and follow Jesus. I, th I think it's time that we become bold in what we're going through. And to stand up tall and stand up proud. Someone asked me, they said, how did you get up over the concrete? By the strength of God. I didn't have nothing to push up on. I just got up. And God gave me the strength. And I cried out for that strength. No neighbors came. They probably enjoyed the show looking through the window panes of the house. But I'm going to tell you something. I believe today that, and I honestly, this is a part of my motto of my life, that God has the final word. And I shall not quit, be defeated, or anything else pertaining to this world. I am going to be loud and proud for Jesus as long as there's breath in my body that I can proclaim the message of our God. Amen. See, His salvation is not temporary. His sacrifice is not just limited for a time. What Jesus did is permanent. You are sealed unto the day of redemption and all the world, the flesh, and the devil cannot break that seal. Amen. Let's go to God's Word. Starting with verse 42, Mark 15. And now when the even was come, because it was the preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea an honorable counselor which also waited for the kingdom of God came and went in I love this word and you ought to underscore it in the King James it says boldly amen came in boldly unto Pilate and craved the body of Jesus and Pilate marveled if he, want, if he were already dead and calling upon him the centurion probably the centurion that stood there and said behold truly this was the son of God and the centurion he asked him whether he had been any while dead and when he knew it of the centurion he gave the body to Joseph and he brought fine linen took him down wrapped him in the linen laid him in the sepulchre which was hewn out of a rock and rolled a stone unto the door of the sepulchre and Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph beheld where he was laid. It happened at 3 p.m. on a Friday afternoon the man who was nailed to the middle cross died. His name was Jesus the Christ the Messiah of the world many who stood around the cross that day they wept they thought all hope died when he took his last breath but in that death and those last words Jesus cried out three words that changed everything he didn't say, I am finished. He didn't say, I am defeated. He didn't say, I am down, out, and will never get up again. He said, it is finished. And Mark records that he breathed his last breath. The event was so moving that even that weathered, hard centurion that stood there Again, I remind you, said, surely this was the Son of God. The struggle of the cross 
is now over. The work the Father had given the Son to do, it is finished. Golgotha is now quiet. But there was one man in the silence of the moment who was in a hurry. That man made his way over to Pilate's praetorium. His name is Joseph of Arimathea. There's something interesting about this man. Joseph honored Jesus. Joseph honored Jesus. Let me ask you a question. Can that be said in your living today? Of how you live? How you conduct your life? Can it be said of you that you honor Jesus? Could it be said if you die and the eulogy of your life, would it say that person honored Jesus? You honor Him by your living. You honor Him by your devotion. You honor Him by your separation from the world and your separation to Him. You can't live two lifestyles and honor God. You can't live for the world and live for Jesus. You've got to take up the cross and follow Him. And that means sometimes it suffers loss. That sometimes means rejection. That sometimes means people mock and laugh at you. And let me tell you what, my dear friend. I'd rather follow Jesus than to follow this world. Because following this world, listen, following this world brings temporary results. But following Jesus brings eternal bliss and blessings to your life. So you've got to look. You've got to look. And only you and God know the devotion that you have to Him. It's easy to be a Christian in this room. To raise hands, to say amen, stand up, praise God, all those good things. But, how is it when you are out in life by yourself, how is your living then? I made a remark yesterday on Facebook, because it irritates me. When I see people who profess and put all over Facebook about Jesus and then how they serve Him, and how they love Him, and then... Later in the week, they talk about sitting there, using foul language, drinking a beer. Is that honoring devotion to God? You're a fence straddler. I believe it's time if we today believe on the blood of Jesus and the cross and the resurrection and that He's coming again. I believe it's time we start living what we say we believe. Amen. I believe it's time we start standing up and being the people that we claim to be for God. This world needs to see your salvation is genuine, real, and you believe what you live. Amen, Pastor. Amen. If you came up in a liturgical church, which I did, you probably remember something that was called the Apostles' Creed. Any of you remember that? Some of you still maybe practice that. Part of it reads this way. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. According to the scriptures, Jesus was buried. The formula for baptism is actually taken from the burial of Jesus. I have baptized many people in this church, buried in the likeness of his death, going under the water, raised in the likeness of his resurrection coming up out of the water. You know, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus, then, if you look at it, he gives us life. Mark had said, when evening 
or even was come. Jesus had been on the cross six hours of suffering. And there Jesus died. And it's right before what is called the Sabbath, which is Saturday. Shabbat in the Jewish language is on Saturday. And they must hurry to get Jesus buried because Shabbat begins at 5 p.m. on Saturday or Friday. So Joseph Arimathea was a very respected person within the culture of that day. And he sat actually on the Sanhedrin. And note, it was the Sanhedrin council that condemned Jesus to death. And Joseph did not agree with that condemnation. He would not vote for the death of Christ. He was spiritually different. He was looking for the kingdom of God. Are you? Are you looking for what these girls sung this morning? Come, Jesus, come. Or is all your attention devoted today to all the craziness of what's going on in our nation of election? The scripture says he went boldly, meaning that he had courage. And I believe it's time that we as Christians stop hiding under the pews of the church in that Christianity and start being more bold in what we say that we believe. I believe today we don't have to mingle with the world and the things of the world because the word of God says, Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing. You can't dabble in the world and dabble with Jesus. You can't be a Christian on Sunday and live like hell the rest of the week. He was bold, courage. And it takes courage to be a Christian. To stand up and not be ashamed of Christ. So we see that Pilate, he had perceived that this, and they thought of Jesus as a criminal. And normally a criminal's body would be thrown on what was called Gehenna, the garbage heap. And they were burned. And so what Joseph did for Jesus would mark him the rest of his life. Boy, when I, when I think about that, and I jotted that note down, when I think about that, what he did for Jesus marked him. Marked him for life. And if you've come to Christ, you should have been marked for the rest of your life. That you're marked by the blood of Jesus you're covered by the blood of Jesus. Let me just give you a little sidebar here. When you're covered by, the Jesus, by Jesus and the blood today, that means, one, you don't have to live like the world is living. Also, it means today that in the trials of life that you go through and the problems that you face and the anxieties that you feel and the hard times that you experience, that means you don't have to be like the world and get defeated and live in anxiety and defeat and worry and be down and out and think you're never going to make it. Boldness and courage causes you to stand up and stand tall for Christ. To be a warrior, not a quitter. To know that God is with you in whatever you're going through. Not just in your spiritual life, because I found out the strongness of your spiritual life, the strength that you find in the boldness of your spiritual life will give you the strength and the boldness and the courage to go through what you're facing when your life seemingly is falling apart. When you think all is lost, oh yeah, but you haven't seen what God's got in store for you. When you think you've reached the bottom, you don't know how God can pick you up and get you back on your feet. When you think the sun will never shine again, that listen, even when you're weeping and you're going through struggle, you remember what, what David said, your weeping may endure. Oh, come on church. Your weeping may endure for a night, but your joy will come in the morning. Amen. March for the rest of your life. And when you're going through things, let me tell you what your life is on trial. You're on the witness stand of life in the court of the world of how you're living your life. And let me tell you, only by the grace of God was I able to go through what I went through but to give glory to Him. To witness and to lead people, an atheist, a Muslim, lost people, 
good people that were going to hell that needed Jesus to have people come in and say, I don't know how in the world you can be happy when you're going through the hell that you're going through. You know how? Because I had somebody going with me through it. One, I had two kids. But let me tell you what I love. I love every square inch of them. And what an encouragement they've been. Stood over me when I didn't even know I was going to live, die, or whatever. And stood over me and prayed over me and kept telling me in my heart, my spirit, my life to fight, to fight, to fight, Dad. Fight! Don't give up! Don't quit! And I'm telling you, this same God that brought me off of the deathbed will bring you through what you're going through and give you life that you can fight and win in Christ today. You know, you're getting a lot of stuff that wasn't in the message, but it is now. So the body was released to Joseph. Joseph brought fine linen and removed Jesus from the cross, and the body of Jesus was washed Spices were brought, wrapped into the linen to preserve the life. And his body was placed in a tomb. So that brings me to a theme and five quick points. The theme declares this. The death and burial of Jesus puts life in the believer. The death and burial of Jesus Christ puts life in the believer. Point one, live a purpose, purposeful life. Be careful of the word fulfilled. It's become a common term in our culture today. Everybody's talking about being fulfilled. That term really came about in the 20th century and became more in the words that people would speak. But listen, your purpose in life, your purpose careful listen to this your purpose in life is not to be fulfilled but to find out in life how your life can fulfill the will of God in you amen we see from the scriptures that Joseph is a respected man he is consistent he's honest he's trustful He's steadfast, he's unmovable, and he's abounding in the work of the Lord, as the Word of God tells us to be. He was a person of faith. He was a person who believed. He's a man that thinks for himself, and he has no puppets. Let me tell you what. You don't need no puppets in your life. All you need is Jesus. He will give you purpose in your living. Joseph had what all of, we, all of us need. And Joseph had a moral compass. Hear me now. Hear me, hear, I want you to hear what I'm going to tell you. He understood what's right and what's wrong. America right now does not have no perception of what's right and what's wrong. We're living in a culture today that's living in a shade of gray. There's no longer right and there's no longer wrong. Oh, I'm telling you today, there is still right and there's still wrong in the God's plan and in God's word. Amen. The cross, Jesus had changed Joseph as it should change you. The cross of Jesus will redirect your purpose in life. He was a good man before the cross. But after the cross, he was a redeemed, saved man. Amen. Live your life with purpose for Christ. Secondly, live a hopeful life. Hopeful. H-O-P-E-F-U-L. Joseph of Arimathea knew there was something better in life. Have you discovered that? Have you discovered there's something better in your life and in living? He was looking for something better. He knew this world was not all there is. Hallelujah. Praise God. His hope was not in Pilate, not in Rome, and not in the Sanhedrin. He knew that there was another kingdom. Woo, glory, amen. And if Joseph can be hopeful, then I'm going to tell you right now, every one of you can be hopeful also. For you and I, our hope is in the day values such as this. Life and not 
abortion. Amen, Pastor. Marriage between a man and a woman. A male and a female. Two different genders for our God is not a trans God. We can do more than, than just looking for the kingdom. We can actually join the kingdom and be a part of it. And we only do that through the new birth of knowing Christ as our Savior. We can go to the King. His name is Christ Jesus. And we can see His perfect life. His death on the cross. His resurrection on the third day. And we can see that Jesus did it all for you and I. With that, you can live a hopeful life. My hope is not in government, a politician, or a president, or a senate, or a congress, or anything else. My hope is found in Jesus Christ and Him alone. And that's where you build your life. For if you're building your life on the sinking sands of this world, it's going to crumble and it's going to fall. But when you build your life on Jesus, let me tell you what, the storms will beat, the rains will come, the winds will blow. But when the sun comes back out again, you're still standing by the grace of God. Amen. Third, live a teachable life. Joseph believed Jesus. But he was afraid of what people would think. Oh, was he? He wouldn't have his position with the Sanhedrin. But, as a believer, you, you cannot have one foot planted in Christ and one foot planted in the world. There has to be a change in your life like there was for Joseph of Arimathea. He was bold in his belief. He didn't compromise. He didn't ride the fence. And friend, we need to learn that today. We need to learn in our lives to this, that, this day that when that change of salvation happened in your life, you're not the same person that you used to be. Your desires have changed. Your life has changed. Your heart has changed. Your mind has changed. Your values have changed. Your priorities have changed. Because if you're in Christ, therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. And you know, that's what's frustrating to me with politicians. You better be careful, friend. They talk and they give the Christian image. And I can take you back to a few previous presidents and show you examples, but I'm not. If you're smart, you know. They give the image of a Christian values and Christian that they are Christian to voters but their heart is not anchored in Christ. They're not real. They don't believe in what the Bible says. How can you believe in Jesus and you endorse and condone abortion? How can you in Christ believe and you go and endorse and believe in the transgender way and really that we're having inmates in prisons that today that our government, you and I as taxpayers, are paying for them to have operations to go transgender. It's happening. You cannot today be in a position as a Christian and endorse anything today that endorses and condones the LBGQT. Amen. I'm not endorsing no candidates in politics. I'm telling you today, most of them, if not all of them, are nothing but a pack of wolves and liars. And they, will, they were, they are chameleons, and they will be a Christian when they're around Christians, and they'll cuss like a sailor and drink like a fish when they are with that world bunch. You better be careful. If your heart is not anchored in Christ, then you have totally missed what God has for you. You not, cannot be a Christian 
hear what I'm going to say. You cannot be a Christian without change. Change. You come to the cross. You come to Jesus. It changes you. Fourth, live a repentant life. Well, preacher, if it gets any deeper, we're going to need a shovel to get out of it. I'm giving you the word because this is what's wrong in churches today. We're getting mealy mouth messages that have no substance of the word of God attached to it and has nothing with right living attached to it and has no blood of Jesus attached to it, no cross, no resurrection, no kingdom of God attached to it. And you come in and you get your coffees and you get your donuts and you socialize and the preacher gives you a feel-good message and you walk out and you're still in the hell that you came in with. Change will bring deliverance. Change will bring you out of what you're in. Change will change your heart, your mind, your life, and your eternity. Amen. All right. Fourth point. Live a repentant life. Joseph took courage. And after Jesus died on the cross, something happened to Joseph. You know, he became bold. And what does it, what does it look like to repent? That's a common word in religion today. I'm not a religionist. I'm a redeemed child of God. There has to be confession of your sin. Also, it's got to be confession in the fact that we understand Jesus took our sin and he died on the cross for our sins. We exchange then, this is a great exchange, we exchange our sins for his righteousness. What is the first letters, first five letters in righteousness? R-I-G-H-T. It means you need to start living right. Because that's the only way righteous people can live. And this is Jesus saving us. And this is Jesus changing us. Repentance is not repentance if there is not a change. Repentance is not repent. You can come up here... You can saturate this carpet with your tears and you can cry your little sweetheart out and get all that anxiety off of you and get up and still have the same mess that's in your life. It's not until you repent that God can change you. What does repentance say? God, forgive me of my sin. Change me. Deliver me. Set me free. Amen. And lastly, live. Ooh, man. Baptist preacher's telling you to live a risky life. Amen. Amen. These men risk it all to follow Jesus. Can that be said of us? Are we like Joseph Arimathea was previously? A silent Christian. Well, I'm just one of those that's silent. I just, you know, I don't show any emotion. Oh yeah, you're watching a football game, or you're in a stadium watching some sporting event, and your kids are playing. You're just going to sit there like you do in church. I don't think so. You're going to take those bleachers and stomp them into firewood. Amen. You're going to get up and holler and shout and carry on. We film. Apple Max County High School football and there's a lady and I'm telling you I know that lady can't talk for a week after she's been in that game I'm on a perch filming she's down there and she's running her mouth and she does not have a megaphone she doesn't have anything but that woman must have the biggest lungs of anybody in Apple Max County amen you can hear her all the way on the other side amen I'm telling you in life we no longer, we're bench warmers and we're sitting and watching but we're not in the parade and we're not on the field and we're not in the walk and the path of being the Christians that God has called us to be. I believe it's time that we take the risk to serve Jesus. Eternity is not based on your social status, your family lineage or anything about you, your physical life. It's all about accepting Jesus Christ into your life and then living for this Christ whom you have accepted. It may appear a risk, but I'll tell you the death, the burial and of Jesus.
puts life in the believer. Amen. As I close, are you saved? You and I do not know when the trumpet will sound and Christ shall come. The scripture says it's going to happen. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we who are alive and remain shall be what? Called up, which means changed. Are you ready for that? Have you seen what's happening in Israel? Have you read the book, 22 chapters of Revelation? What's happening in America doesn't have a dime's worth of what's happening in the fact of what's going on in Israel. That is the temperature gauge of the coming of Christ. And I'm going to tell you, man, the mercury is at the top and it's about to blow it out.